Hello and welcome to the ET197 How To PLC Counters 2A, the first part. We are going to cover one shots. Okay, we've cleaned the uh, PLC up and I have a fresh program ready to start. First thing we need to go is edit mode and we're going to utilize this sidebar over here with some of our functions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a leading edge one-shot contact. Okay, and this is a one-shot that once we push the button is going to stay on for one complete cycle of the PLC and turn off. So this way we could do uh, a quick function and turn it right off without it latching up and it's going to be used for a lot of the things that we're going to do with some of the functions so over here we're going to use a timer so timer counter drum and we're going to go to the standard timer and we're going to call this t1 two seconds okay we'll come back here and we'll call it timer one Right, select, check mark. Okay, so we're going to add another uh, output right below it. And we're going to call that one C1. And I found some cool new functions that we have here. Instead of our control arrows, we could use these three here, up, down, and across. So if we do that, and I'm going to need a C, come on. I'm going to need a C0 there, and let's go ahead and do a wire up there. So we're going to seal around that one shot. And then I'm going to put in a normally closed. So I'm going to call that T1 done. And what I'm building here is an old school basic one shot. Okay, so this guy, once we turn it on, this one's going to seal around this, so it's going to continue to time. Once it hit two seconds, we're going to get a T1 done. This is going to open up and shut down our timer. So we're going to send a two second high and then off. And let's go ahead and watch it on one of our indicators. So we're going to call this guy Y1. And let's call it uh, Reset. T1 reset indicator. How about that? I N D for indicator. Oops. And beautiful. Right select. Okay. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and accept. Write the PLC. Okay. We need to be in run mode. And I want my status, which is already on and it just reset itself for some reason okay so let's go here and let's start x1 so we're going to give it a quick pulse on off timer's working and you see that for two seconds let's do it again we got y1 on and two seconds later it's off one shot simple basic and let's go ahead and save this. Oh, it looks like timer 1C. Good. All righty, stop being a pest. Let's just plain old save it. There we go. Okay, let's do a push on, push off. And we're just going to use a switch. We're going to call that X2. And SW2. Right select. And we're going to go check mark. And we're going to go up to contacts. And we're going to go, I'm sorry, coil. PV on and off and in out is going to be c1 and let's go ahead and reset c3 that's going to be our reset 
Okay, so every time we push this, it's going to go on. Push it again, it's going to go off. And what we're going to do is it's going to have an output here. And we're going to call this Y2 and just take it, keep an eye on it. And let's call it, what are we going to call it? P on space indicator I in B. Okay. And I'm going to add X3. And I'm going to call him P on, P off, reset. Wow. P on, space, P off, space, reset. Don't use any uh, dashes or backslashes or anything. It will it will growl at you and then erase it, and you have to start from scratch. So be careful. The only thing it seems to like is the underscore. Right, select, check. Okay, and we're just going to go to C3. So once we push that, we could reset that remotely. Okay, so we could push it on, push it off, or we can push C X3, which is going to send a bit from C3 and reset that. So let's go ahead and accept, write, save without all the nonsense, bring up our thing, make sure we're in run mode, yep, and we got our status appears to be on. So let's grab our, so first thing we're going to do is turn X3. Okay, so it's on, off, every time that I reset it, and we get a Y2 out. Let's leave it on, and let's say that I want to reset it externally, like emergency off. I can just push X3. Good. Okay, so let's do a, another one. Let's do a new school one shot. And um, so let's trigger it with X4. This is a function that they added a year or two ago, I believe. And I'm going to call that S4 timed out. And that space switch has saved me time without chasing down the underscore. So let's write it, select it. Okay, so we're going to go to find out okay and there's maintain output I'll cover that later so we're going to use output we're going to go right to our light so we don't have to go through another another uh, contact inner contact so good and I want to show you some stuff here that's a pretty simple one so let's go up to Tools, Documentation Error Editor. So right in here, we have all of our information. So I could double click. I didn't want that erased, but it'll come back, hopefully. And uh, all of our information here. So let's go to Y3. And I'm just going to call that Y3 Indicator. So I could actually put the information there, and let's go back up, and let's just put some extra information here. Lamp, I don't know, 2, 3, C is the model, and bright as our description. And we can go right back to main. And everything should be there. Timed out. Y3 indicator, okay. And that one doesn't allow us to put anything on top because it's inside the box. But let's run it. And make sure we save it. 
and let's push X4 and off. And we're going to make that four seconds because that's just not long enough for us to see it. Except right. We'll catch the save for later. Alrighty, so let's X4 and it's on. And it's going to count down once it gets four, it's off. Good. 